Hi VC, hope you're all good and you've had a nice Easter break. Um, I've been meaning to make this video for quite a while but I've never had the time to do it so I thought I'd just uh, chip off for a little bit and try and make it now and see how we go. Um, when I used to do a lot of record buying uh, back in the 1990s I often used to combine it with uh, second-hand bookstores because I like collecting old paperbacks and things like that as well. And one of my main interests at the time was uh, the beat writers like Kerouac, Ginsberg and Burroughs and in particular I was always looking for Kerouac books um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share some of the stuff that I found back then and also kind of how it developed over the years as well. So I'm going to start with uh, an LP because Karak made three LPs. Um, he made one with Steve Allen on piano because they were quite uh, good friends. Um, one with the jazz musicians Al Cohn and Zoot Sims which was called Blues and Haiku. And then uh, one came out with, with no accompaniment at all and it was this one here called uh, uh, it was, uh, Readings of Jack Carrack on, on the Beat Generation. It originally came out on Verve, an incredibly hard LP to find, and this is actually a reissue um, which came out with the Rhino box set of the three LPs. And uh, you can see the back of it here. This is like an exact copy of it, really, but it's a really nice LP, very atmospheric with some cr uh, key readings on it, and there's the, uh, the vinyl for it there. Okay, um, now when I was collecting this kind of stuff, obviously there was no YouTube, there was no internet, there was no Amazon no discogs you couldn't find anything and it's very difficult to, to to actually hear any recordings by any of the beat writers every now and then on BBC two you'd get a little bit a little bit of it so like for example they showed Paul my Daisy the I think it's a Robert Frank uh, film and with Carrot narrating it and uh, there was a documentary on Burroughs I can remember watching as well but there was nothing more um, some of the things I did manage to pick up was this, this is about 20 years ago, this came out of the turn of the millennium. They did a, a, a series of these called Legends of the 20th Century, and they were authors or poets. And this has got a, a, a compilation of all three of his LPs, and it's quite a nice one to get there. So that was quite a good one. This came out in 2003. This is Jazz of the Beat Generation on Jazz FM. And uh, there was lots of readings from Karak on here. So it says like Karak, the Beat Generation. Um, and so on, you've got Stan Getz on there, Felonious Monk, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, you know, the bebop sort of pioneers, really. So that's pretty good. And then this one came out more recently, and this is a real gem, I think. This this is a documentary about Carrack's time in, in, a, in a, is it the Bixby Canyon in, in Big Sur, staying in a, in a cabin, and uh, it's called One Fast Move or I'm Gone, and it's Jay Farrar and Ben Gibbard. Now, Jay Farrar you'll know from Sunvolt and Uncle Tupelo, and Ben Gibbard you'll know from Def Cab for Cutie. I think I'm right on that. But this is a documentary and then there was an, uh, and a record that, or a CD that they made. It also came out on vinyl, that's very hard to get now. This is a wonderful recording. It's Carrack's writings put to music, which does sound a little bit dodgy, but it's not. It's, that, it's, a, it's an album which stands up in its own right and it always gets really good reviews when you read it. So it's well worth, if you like this kind of type of stuff, it's Americana, it's got pedal steel in it and so on. But the songs are fantastic, it's well worth getting. It's really effect, quite emotional and affecting at times as well. It's a really good thing. Anyway, let me get on to the books. So I was always looking for uh, second-hand paperbacks and I managed to pick up quite a few over the years. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my carrot ones first of all, and I'm gonna show you some of the spin-off books, sort of exploiting the beat generation and a couple of oddities which I picked up along the way as well. Um, here's, a, here's a pan edition of On The Road. Uh, and this is a British edition of the book with the blurb on the back and the photo taken especially for On the Road of Kerouac there. But this is a lovely copy of this book and this, they're getting much harder to find now. They were hard to find 20 years ago and uh, of course 20 years later, you know, much more difficult. This is a book which must have sold in its millions, I would have thought. This is a signet edition of On the Road uh, and it's an American edition. A, a kind of literary James Dean, wolf-like and Whitman-esque hip cool beat and frantic brilliantly transcribed by the nation obviously when this book was was uh, published it got rave reviews in the new york times and it caused a huge change in Carrack's life and he found it very difficult to cope with um, he drank a lot more and he tried to escape the fame he was obviously he was accused of a lot of uh, of society's ills with beatniks and things like that and he was he never kind of associated himself with 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 beatniks he he was a writer this is a lovely book to get hold of. This is a, a book written by Joyce Johnson, also Joyce Glassman, and this is an account of her time as the girlfriend of, of, of Jack Kerouac. Now, she was with Kerouac when On the Road was published, and she actually went down to the news stall, newsstand to look at the early reviews of, of, of the book, and she said, basically, when they got back, the phone started ringing, and that's the end of that. Um, this is a lovely book. 
this is the first edition of this um, and it's well worth picking up if you ever see it um, other stuff I've got as well I've got this is one of my favorite car books this is Maggie Cassidy uh, and it's a lovely copy of this one you can see it there what about her who's a romance uh, this is a a Brit one. I'll do this one first. This is a American edition of the Subterraneans. And you can see it here. It's a very short novel, not one of my favourites, but it was this novel that actually got made into a movie, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. So there we go, there's the front of that. And then this is the British edition of it, which I actually prefer the cover on this one. But you can already see here the, the how the beats were exploited here, because on the back you've got this is basically the book that was released when the movie came out. You've got Leslie Caron and George Peppard there in the subterraneans. Now remember they put the subterraneans on after Paul My Daisy on BBC Two. Subterraneans, you know, in my view, a dreadful, dreadful movie. Really, really bad. They changed pretty much everything in it. But there we go. So there's Carrots the Subterraneans, really nice one. Uh, I might I picked this one up uh, for 10p. This is Tratessa, um, which uh, you know a bit knackered but still good to get this book. And then one of probably Carrot's most harrowing novels there is Big Sir. Um, this is a about obviously I've talked about Big Sur already earlier on in this video but this is one of my favorite books but it's very very dark uh, he writes a poem about the sea in it um, and there's a but there's a real blaze of light in it when Cassidy, Neil Cassidy and Karen and Cassidy and their children come to visit Kerouac and the light blazes into the hut and so on it's a really good one that one um, also another book that which I found was this one here this is a it's a second edition, it's a bit bad, but I was really glad to get it. The Dharma Bums, my, probably my favourite car up book from when I was younger. And this is a second edition. If I just show you inside, you can sort of see it there. And then you can see here, this time only one book had been published by Karak and it was On the Road, another book by him. Okay, so that's some good stuff that I found there. Um, if I show you some of the uh, other stuff I found, I found The, the Holy Barbarians by uh, Loris Lipton. Um, and this is kind of like the first serious piece of, of writing about the, the Beat Generation. It's a good book to get this one. See the back of it there. This is the first edition of that. My favourite biography by Karak. Well, I've got a few. I've got most of the biographies. I think I've read them all. Um, but the one that Anne Charters, because she wrote, uh, was obviously in contact with Karak and met him while he was still alive. For he passed away 50 years ago this year. Um, but this is a really good Karak uh, biography. I really like this one. I bought this in Brighton in 1999. I remember seeing it in the front of a shop window and just went in and got it. This is a really good one as well. Lots of people say this is the best one to read. This is the Tom Clark biography of Jack Kerouac as well. Um, I think what spurred me to, to collect the originals were, 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 the, were the, 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 the awful front covers from the 1990s. Some of you probably remember these in the UK, the front covers. These are the, the books that I bought as, as a late teen and so on. Okay. Um, the fa my favourite book on the Beat Generation is this one here. Is, uh, this is Carolyn, Carolyn Cassidy's Off the Road. Now, when the Big Sur documentary came out, I actually began writing to Carolyn Cassidy and got quite a few stroke up a bit of correspondence with her. And I'll read you something that she wrote to me um, back in 2008. But this is a fantastic book. If you're interested in the Beat Generation at all, I'm sure you've probably read this, but if you haven't, it's really worth reading. This is, I did have the original when it came out, but it, I've still got it, but it's in pieces, basically, so many people borrowed it. This one, Karen Cassidy signed for me there, so you can see that one there. Okay, um, I have stuff that I got as well. I've got one of uh, Karak's closest friends at the beginning of his writing career was John Clennon Holmes. I think he stayed with him for a while. This is his jazz novel, jazz novel The Horn. His favourite book by me is Go, uh, which I do have somewhere which I can't find at the moment, but it's all, it was called The Beat Boys in the UK. It was released on Ace Books. Uh, really, really good book. Really good. Well worth reading. And Get Home Free is another one as well. So read, if you can read any of them, I'd read Go first of all, then, then The Horn second. These are some of the books which I found kind of just when I was looking for Karak books. Um, I found a book on San Francisco called The Barbary Coast, which is a kind of key text on the gold rush era all the way up to the, it goes all the way up to roughly about the earthquake. Um, 1906, this is by Herbert Ashbury. It's a good one. Um, I found this, which is I think is actually quite a rare book. It Ain't Hay. Uh, by David Dodge and it's got a map of San Francisco on the back there it's quite brittle condition in quite a brittle condition this one but it's well worth having there R ridiculous front cover well cool um, why am I so beat the wildest weekend since catcher in the rye I seriously doubt that but that's a, sort of like an exploitation book the far out ones 
you've got an original hipster there with a beard strumming the guitar I found a I like it cool and it actually mentions beatniks it says Johnny Amsterdam I with a beard squares off the world of the beatniks and then I've got the shook up generation and I've got easy living as well okay um, now I want to show you this because when this came out I said I started writing to Carolyn Cassidy and she started writing back to me and I was quite surprised I was asking her mainly about what it was like living in San Francisco at the time being a geographer I wanted to find out more and more, more about the city that I visited quite a few times but she wrote me quite a few replies so I've just got one of them here for you and I, I was trained to be a teacher at the time and uh, and uh, we were talking about geography and I, I was living in Bath and she was really envious. She says here, I, was, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to say that I really envy the time that you spent in Bath. I have close friends there who I often used to visit. They have gone, they had, they had a home way up on Macande Hill, which overlooks Bath far below. The light on the semicircle of Goldenstone is awe inspiring with green meadows and grazing cows. The city has, itself has a lot to offer. I was asking her about San Francisco and she wrote me a wonderful reply. She wrote me quite a lot. She told me a lot about Carrack actually as well. She wasn't, she had quite strong views on the Big Sur documentary and she just could never really understand the fame that Carrack had compared to the Carrack that she knew. Like for example, I remember she told me that she said that whenever he was having a shave, he'd always shut the door because he was embarrassed to shave in front of anyone and things like that. But this is what she wrote about, about San Francisco. It says the big change in San Francisco was the arrival of motorways and all those in the sky. There was none of that where, when we lived there. She's talking about her and Neil Cassidy. Uh, the ferry building was free of all shops and there was no commercialism. I've always been glad that the hills prevented many change in mid-city, so the sprawling suburbs must go down the peninsula only. I look back and I can't believe that I used to drive a Model A Ford up and down those hills with no hill holder at all. I loved the sparkling clean air, all the water and the sounds of foghorns. When working, I would ride a cable car to and from. It was like fairyland to me. Our last home there was at Russell Street and the present owner is very proud of the connection with Carrack where he wrote some of his work. Um, they've done so much to it, things that I always wanted to do and it is now a stunning property but outside it looks much the same as when I lived there. But I much prefer jolly old England now to California for so many reasons but I really miss my kids. They are Californian born and bred but they still enjoy visiting me here. All the best for now, Carolyn. So that was just one of her things that she wrote to me uh, about 11 years ago. She sadly passed away a few years ago, but she was living in Bracknell in England um, uh, towards the end of her life. And she was just so receptive and wanted to, 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 to write. And she was a big writer, must have been a big writer herself. So there we go. There's my little collection. I hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't much vinyl, just one piece, but there were some other things that you might be uh, interested in. I've got a whole load of other stuff as well, but I didn't want to uh, drone on and on. So anyway, that's it for now. And I'll, I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.